Collection spotlights are an amazing way to feature new titles, staff picks, or anything else you want to highlight on your website or on a web builder page within Aspen. Here's an example of a collection spotlight feed used for Carpinteria Community Library's external website. They have embedded a spotlight featuring their new books here. Next, let's take a look at Meville Public Library's website. They have built their entire website out of Aspen and they have some collection spotlights embedded on their pages throughout. There are two ways to create collection spotlights, from lists and from search results. When using lists for collection spotlights, the titles shown in the spotlight will only change as you add new titles or remove titles from the list. If you create a spotlight from search results, what's shown will change dynamically based on your search parameters. So if your search has the newest titles sorted to the top, new titles will automatically appear as they get added to your collection. Let's begin with lists. So start by navigating to the list you want to turn into a collection spotlight. The list privacy will need to be set to public in order to use it as a collection spotlight. If you want to use a list created by another user, their list will need to be set to public and searchable, and your account will need the edit all list permission. To edit list privacy, click on the title, then click the edit button. And here you can change the access from private to public. To use this list as a collection spotlight, click the Create Spotlight button. Enter a name for your spotlight. Then click Create Spotlight. You'll then be taken to a summary page showing the settings and code snippets to copy if you plan to use this spotlight on a website outside of Aspen. We will come back to this page in another minute to explore it in more detail. To create a spotlight from search results, you can either start with a blank search and filter down from there using the facets, or you can perform a more specific search if necessary. So I'm going to search by subject, more cat mysteries, and I'll use the audience facet to narrow down to adult materials. Collection spotlights based on search results are dynamic, meaning they'll update as new items matching your search criteria get added to the collection. So if you want the newest items to always stay at the beginning of your collection spotlight, you can change the sorting method from best match to date purchase descending. Once your search results look how you want them to, navigate to your search tools. They will either be at the very bottom of search results or they might be up here. This is in a recent release where you can move the search tools to the top of the search results. So I'm going to click search tools and then from here you can click create spotlight. I want to leave this on create a new spotlight, then give it a name. and then click Create Spotlight. Once you create a collection spotlight, you'll be taken to this summary page, which we saw a little bit earlier before, showing your settings, which lists or searches are used in the spotlight. And this page is also where you'll find what you need for embedding on a website outside of Aspen. Here is the source URL to copy, or there's a HTML snippet if you need the entire thing. If you scroll down, you also have another option for a raw HTML snippet. This one gives options for horizontal resizing. When you create a spotlight, it doesn't automatically show up anywhere in Aspen for users to see. In order for people to see your spotlight, you have to either embed it on a web builder page in Aspen or embed it on your library's website using the source URL or this HTML code. From here, I can scroll back up and I can click on all collection spotlights to view all the collection spotlights I've created. I can also access that from any time under local catalog enrichment. 
and then collection spotlights. I can also click edit here to customize the settings for the spotlight. From here, you can change which libraries should be able to use this spotlight. You can change the spotlight name or add a description. The description is completely optional and is only visible internally. Next, you can adjust the number of titles that should be shown in the spotlight by default. Adjusting this is useful if you have, say, 27 items on a list. So you might want to adjust this number to 27 so that users can cycle through all of the items on your list. In this next section, you have a few options for whether or not the title of the item should display, whether the author or format should display, and whether rating stars should display. You can also adjust the style of the spotlight. Horizontal carousel is the default, but you can definitely experiment and see which style suits your page best. You have an option here to automatically rotate between titles without having to manually advance to the left or to the right. Just note that this can cause issues with some screen readers, so be careful about where and how often you use this. You have an option for the cover sizes, and there is an option here for CSS, but this is a little bit of a legacy setting at this point. Um, if you want to style your spotlight, you can configure it in your theme CSS, and it should be applied wherever you embed it, whether it's within Aspen's Web Builder or on your website. Next is the display lists as setting which allows you to combine multiple lists or searches into one collection spotlight. But since that's its own thing, let's come back to that in a minute and see how to combine spotlights. Below this are two settings for controlling whether or not the title bar displays above the collection spotlight and whether the view more link should display. This link will take users to either the source list or search results used to build the spotlight. So if I click show view more, I'll save my changes. If we click preview, we'll be able to see a preview of that spotlight here. And over to the side, you'll see the view more link. And that takes you to the search results used to generate that collection spotlight. Up in the top here, along this where it's blue and it has the new cat mysteries, that is the title bar. So like we just saw, you can disable that as well. Once you've made any changes that you would like, of course, save your changes down here at the bottom or click the floating save button. And at any time after you save, you can click the preview button to see a preview of the changes you've made to your collection spotlight before embedding it somewhere else. You also have the ability to combine multiple lists or search results into one collection spotlight display. Here we have a web builder page featuring magic school bus titles, and they've combined separate lists for books, videos, and audiobook materials. The source types don't all have to be the same in order for this to work. So you could have one tab that's from search results, another tab from a list, however you want to do it. To create a combined spotlight, you'll first need to have at least one spotlight created. I made my Meowstery spotlight earlier, so I want to add a new tab for Dog Mysteries. I'm going to use this list and add it to my existing spotlight. And once again, because this is a list, I want to make sure that the privacy is set to public. If it's not, when I click on the title, I can click on the Edit button and adjust the privacy settings. If everything is set up as it should be, then just click Create Spotlight. This time, I want to change this option from Create a New Spotlight to Selecting the Spotlight that I want to add this to. A new option will pop up here, but that's only if you want to replace the spotlight you've selected. So I'm going to leave that alone, and instead, in this field, I'm going to type the name of the new Spotlight tab I want to add. Then click Create Spotlight. 
And now on the summary page, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to see that you now have two sources for your collection spotlight. Keep in mind that combining spotlights in this way doesn't create a whole new spotlight. You're just adding on to the spotlight you selected. So if I wanted to have a standalone Meowstery spotlight, I would either need to create another spotlight or I could remove Dogtectives from this spotlight. But first, let's preview and see what this combined spotlight looks like. Click the preview button. And here you'll see I have my first tab for Meowsteries and my second tab for Dogtectives. If I click edit, and scroll down. Here under display lists as, you can change it from a tab display to a drop down list. So let's see what that looks like. So instead of the tabs, we have a drop down in the top right corner, and that is how you can change your selection. If I want to remove Dog Tectives from this collection spotlight, let's say I changed my mind, I can click edit, scroll down to the bottom, and here you'll be able to see the sources for your collection spotlight. So if I wanted to remove Dog Tectives, I could click delete. If I wanted to remove Meowsteries and just have the Dog Tectives instead, I could click delete there. But I'm just gonna click delete for Dog Tectives, save my changes, and when I preview, it's back to my regular collection spotlight. Once your collection spotlight is ready and you're ready to embed it on your web builder page or on your external website, just click the view button after clicking in to edit your collection spotlight. And it'll take you back to the summary page with the source URL and the source code. If I want to update an existing collection spotlight, I would need to either navigate to the list or the search results I want to use to update the spotlight. Let's say I changed my mind about the Meowstery spotlight, and instead of just any cat mysteries, I want to limit it to a specific series. I have the new search results I want to use here, so I'll just click Search Tools, click Create Spotlight, I'm going to select the spotlight I want to update, then check the box for yes, replace existing spotlight. Then I'm just going to enter in the spotlight name again. Oops. I'm gonna enter it in again because I'm just updating the existing spotlight, not creating a new spotlight or a new tab. If I want to change the name of the spotlight, I can do that in a minute by editing the spotlight settings. Now I'll click Create Spotlight. And now my spotlight is updated with the new content, and anywhere I've embedded the spotlight will automatically update with these changes as well. Thank you for watching. If you have made some really cool collection spotlights, definitely let us know. We'd love to see what you create. Thank you.